If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. And so it's a semi-hollow, I'd call it an F-hole, but it's not an F-hole. I'll, I'll put a picture up so you can take a look at it, see it. I have spoken with Dave Roussan, asked him if it would be okay for me to pursue making that guitar, and he said that I have his blessing. I wanna just go ahead and trudge forward and build custom guitars and give some of these guitars away to people who would really appreciate it. I want this one to look more like this one. So the threads of those bolts are gonna take right in there, so. Hopefully I don't destroy this whole thing in the process. There's still a long ways to go. We've got a lot of shaping and sanding still to do here, but uh, there they are. Okay guys, I have now rough cut with the saber saw my body blanks. There we go, just setting the knobs on there for right now. They're not actually connected to anything. I just got the knobs sitting on there and the bridge and all. And as you can see, we are making progress. For these deep well, they just work so, so, so good. A great set, DeWalt deep sockets. And I just snug it up. As I go ahead and put in the three-way switch, just one thing is you always want your switch so that it's going to work properly when it's, if I'm going to flip my switch down, I want that to be my bridge pickup, middle or center is going to be both pickups, and then up is going to be my neck pickup. Now the way this works is that when this is pulled up, what it's doing is it's pushing this out, meaning it's turning this one off. So up which if the guitar is on, or the guitar is, you know, if I'm gonna be playing it like this, I want that switch to come up like so for this one to be working. This one therefore goes to the neck pickup and we're just gonna check here and see if we've got sound. We got sound there. Should be nothing there. Should be there. Should be there. Should be there. Nothing there. Perfect. All right. We're a go. So now I can start to, to assemble the bridge and the neck. Not too bad there. Not too bad there. There you can hear it's not intonated yet. See? You can hear that there's notes that are just not quite right clashing. It. And then that'll change with the intonation. So because you want it to sound just as in tune here as it does down here, right? <laughs> also given permission to build thin line semi-hollow Prince style guitars 
in talking with Dave Roussan, who built Prince's original guitar and who was working on getting the rights and the patent to that original uh, guitar that was used in the movie Purple Rain. He's calling it a, a Roussan original, is what they're going to be called. I think I can say that they used to be called the Cloud Guitar, but he does not have the rights to that name. So, yeah, one of those legal crazy things, but he is going to be building Roussan originals. Um, and he has given me his blessing that I can make these semi-hollow, thin line style, uh, print style guitars. And I want to build one of those and give it away. I came up with a design some time back. One of Prince's friends and fellow musicians owns this guitar and uses it and loves it. And I think I want to keep building these. And let's give one of them away. Appreciate you clicking on the like button, but really, if you just want to give me some encouragement, subscribe, and by subscribing, that's going to help you be able to see the videos when they come out. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and get to work. I have just rough cut with my saber saw these body blanks. Now, by rough cut, what I mean is I get close to the line of where the actual body is going to be, and that's just going to help me when I'm routing that I'm not having to get uh, s dig out quite so much wood. But before I just take this and slap my template on it and start routing, there's a couple things that I want to think through. Um, first thing that I want to think through is which do I want to be the front and which do I want to be the back or the inside of the guitar in this case. Because these are uh, a half a guitar body, I'm going to be hollowing out the inside and so the outside what I want seen so first thing I want is I want the best grain of the wood to be the outside and one of the tricks a lot of you probably know this but there might be some who are, you this might be new to you but if you take some water just get a little bit of water you don't want it too wet you don't want to soak it but just get this wet and you'll begin to see what the figuring of the wood looks like just a little bit better. So you can see that as compared to the back. You can see the grain of the wood popping out a little bit more. So I'm going to take a look at this side now. And wow, that, I just love curly maple. So beautiful, so beautiful. Wow, I do like that. That would end up being on, on a back side then, um, which I've already thought through this a little bit. But I kind of like this too, so we'll see here. So anyway, there's one option. I'm going to go ahead and work through figuring this out, but I want to talk to you about wood grain as well, because now when I route this out, I want to make sure that my bit is going with the grain, not against the grain. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with that, think of petting a dog. So. If you go from the head of the dog down to the tail of the dog, you're going with the grain of the fur, and the fur stays laying down. But if you go against the grain from the tail to the head, you pull the fur up. Well, wood is similar to that. If I go with the grain, the grain stays laying down. But if I go against the grain, my the blades on my router can grab, or a planer, whatever you're using, a rasp, you can end up grabbing the edges and pulling up and ripping out big chunks of wood if you go against the grain. So some wood is easier to tell than others as to the direction of the wood grain. That's something you want to figure out. There's a lot of videos out there on how to figure out the grain of the wood, so I just recommend that if this is new to you, you might want to go watch one of those. I also want to talk a little bit about laying out the guitar bodies on wood grain and some things that you need to think about. Probably more for the beginner than those of you who have been doing this for a long time. So let's cut back to a few weeks back when I was working on these Union Jack bodies, just getting them going. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the grain of this mahogany. Notice that I've got the template going with the grain of the wood this way. By doing that, I am only going to get two guitar body blanks out of this. I could go sideways like this. Actually, I'd have to be, oh yeah, I'd be, have to be like this because there's a hole down in here. But I could get 
I could get three going that way. However, I will not do that. And just to tell you why, is that mahogany is a mahogany is a fairly brittle wood. And so if I were to go this way with the guitar and the lines, the lines are going across like this, then this piece, especially because of the length and where it's at, it would it could easily break off if it got bumped. So it's going to be stronger going this direction. And so that's why we go with the grain of the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and get this clamped up. And then I'm going to just use my template to route out. And you can follow me as I do that. I used to use a bandsaw to cut out guitar bodies. I mean, that's how I got started, was using the bandsaw. And for the most part, I ended up having to do so many more hours of sanding by using a bandsaw. Whereas when I use, when I use a router, these edges take very little sanding by comparison to using a bandsaw to cut it out. So I strongly recommend using a router and a template. Much, much better way to go about it. So. Unless you have a CNC machine, which I do not. And uh, most people that are just going to be doing this as a hobby at home, do not. I'm able to use some small screws. I don't want them to be too long. But I'm on what would be the inside of the guitar body. And I can screw my template using these short screws. And like this place, this would be underneath the cavity plate anyway. But I can screw those right in and that'll hold my template to my body since it's going to be a um, hollowed out in, in here uh, where my screw holes are at. Just make sure that you're not using screws that are too long and make sure that you know the placement of where the screws can go and then make sure they're countersunk so that your router will not hit them. I'm going to keep my bed as about as shallow as I can as I go ahead and use my template to route. Once I route this first pass, then I can take the template off and just use what's been routed as my template for the rest of the body. So that's What you'll notice I'm doing, I'm using a very sharp brand new bit on here, but I know this wood is dry and brittle. So I'm just taking short little swaps, bringing it towards the body, and then I'll kind of route around the whole thing. But I'm just taking little bits because I don't want to chip it apart. Here is my first pass around. And now I'll be able to use this edge as my template to cut the rest of this off. I was routing my fifth body blank when my router caught and dug in right here, just a little bit on this edge. I like to use a nice thick template, um, but it dug in there a little bit. So what I can do instead of having to put a whole template together is I use a little bit of Bondo. Not a lot, but just a little bit. This is an auto body, if you're not aware of what Bondo is. It is used just to help with fixing rusted out areas or little dips. It's, it's just a, a putty that will dry really, really hard, and especially 
the more of the activator. It's a mixing activator in there that you have to put in with this putty. And I'll get that on there, and it won't take too long to dry. Let's see. There we go. And then I can just go to my divot where I took that out and just kind of run along that. Smooth it out, and obviously I'll have to sand. Anything, any little bumps or grooves on your template is going to show up on whatever it is that you're rounding. Okay, I'm at the place now where I've changed over from a bit with the bearing on the shaft to where the bearing is on the end here. Now I can flip my board over and cut using that. And we'll just take the rest of this off. I'm still far enough away from the table face and I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about cutting into the table. Put on the safety glasses and I'll just show you a little bit of how it cuts this way. Move those out of the way. I don't need any screws going into my head or anything. So. I now have four halves cut out and they're butterflied here. This would be like so, and then this one would be like this. But there's some things that we've got to do before we just start drilling and uh, trying to make our cavities in here because these are going to be semi hollow. First thing to always keep in mind is you need to know where center is. Probably both in life, but also in uh, guitar building here. I need to know, and I've got these marked. And I've got that on my template where my center is. And it actually looks like if I don't, if I were to just try and eye this, I would do it wrong because this looks off center to me here. But this is my center of gravity on this. And then on this one... mark that and I might as well just do all four right away here center and center so I've got my center lines on those so I know where center is I also just put little bit of where the uh, cavity is going to be. I mean the whole thing, this whole thing is pretty much going to be semi hollow and routed out like I said, but to know where my electronics are going, they're pretty much going to go in this little area here. And I just want to keep that in mind as I design and do things here. The other thing is, so now my neck, where my neck is going to join, needs to be at least two and uh, two, let's see, it's two and an eighth or two and three sixteenths, so a little bit more than two and an eighth inches wide is what this will end up being. But I want to go a little bit wider than that anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out from my line, I'm going to mark an inch and an eighth and an inch and an eighth, and that gives me two and a quarter inches wide that I'm going to just make sure that I'm kind of all the way down here. Inch and an eighth, inch and an eighth. I'm going to draw these lines. Then 
this just helps me to plan and remember what I am doing this whole process. Otherwise it would be way too easy for me to forget something. Because now when I get down here, i got to widen this out down here. I'm just going to try and grab an example here. Let's see. I guess and these are these are a different type of bridge, but they're similar in width. So the bridge is going to be in here somewhere, as you can see. And this bridge will be wider than what this solid piece is going to be. And I don't want my anchor bolts to just have the thinness of the top of the of the guitar body which is going to just be really fairly thin up there I want solid anchor all the way down in there so I'm going to have to come across and I need to measure it out yet first but I'll round this down and then I'll come around here and I won't hollow this out but I'll come up just as an example I'm just doing this for the moment just so you can see what this will here let's see I can actually probably do this pretty quick if I let's see. Just to give you an idea. Um, so this is going to be hollowed out except for, like I said, where the bridge is going to have to be. And I need to just get that measured exactly where I want it. But essentially what this will end up doing is, well, I want to come up a little bit more than that. I'll come up with a kind of a curve. The other thing that I try to do in the semi-hollow bodies, I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but I try to keep my angle, keep my curves curved instead of having straight lines things will curve in and I just so the way the resonance inside moves around and then of course in the body here I have to have a very similar thing what I'm going to do now that I'm going to do this I'm going to do more of them uh, I am going to get a template and I will make another body like this and I will just cut that out and use that as my template so that I can route out what I want to be opened up there. Anyway, I didn't get as far as I was hoping today. This took me a lot longer to cut these out than I thought it was going to. Because of the curly maple, and it is a, um, it's a pretty dry piece of wood, and it can be brittle, I really had to be careful that I didn't nick out, which like right there, you can see there's a little nick, but that won't be an issue because it's gonna there's gonna be a little bit of a taper on this anyway so next time we'll come back and I am going to walk you through actually uh, I'll, I'll have that template routed out ready to go and I'll walk you through how I will do that so that we can see how I hollow these out specifically and uh, yeah we'll see if we get any further on these just have a little more shaping to do on on those yet so um, one other thing that I thought about that I'd like to do I want to add another little section into some of these videos where you can share your story if you would write up like a half a page to a page you know maybe 300 to 500 words uh, write up a story about building a guitar and then send me pictures of it and just go to the link at the bottom uh, I'll I'll keep my email in the uh, notes down below the video here so you can go ahead and send me a little bit of your story of guitar building and send us some pictures of the guitars and I'll share those guitar stories um, so I think that'd be kind of fun to do and we can see some of the guitars that you guys are building <laughs>